What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over Google Ads discovery campaigns and I'll be creating a campaign throughout this video. Now just to give you a quick introduction, discovery campaigns allow you to reach people on the YouTube homepage and the Watch Next feeds on Google Discover and on Gmail. They're native advertisements through Google Ads that are very easy to create. You basically just provide your assets and Google Ads will serve the top performing ad combinations. I'll go over more of this later in the video. When it comes to who you're targeting, you can utilize your data or any of the different audience targeting that's available through Google Ads. So there's a lot of different options here. So let's start by building a campaign. Now, before we get started with building our discovery ads campaign, I just want to show you some different examples directly from Google Ads. So you can see the first one here on the left hand side is an example from YouTube. So you can see sneaker advertisements and the way that they look. The other one over here on the in the center is you're going to see a Google Discover advertisement. So obviously you can see a very nice image there. So it looks like a really good advertisement. And then over here on the right hand side, you can see it's a Gmail advertisement example. So just three different places your ads can run. So YouTube, it's Watch Next and the home feeds. Google, it's going to be through Google Discover. So you can see your advertisements will show up when people are in their Discover feed. And then over here on the right hand side, when people are in their social and promotions tabs in Gmail, that's when they'll see your advertisements. So we're going to come over here and we're going to start building our campaign. Okay, so we want to start in our Google Ads account. And what I'm going to be promoting today is on my Farmhouse Goals website, I'm going to be promoting an April 2022 promotion where people can use a certain code at checkout for 10% off all furniture on my website. So we're going to come back over here to Google Ads. We want to create a new campaign. So you want to start by choosing your campaign objective. And I would highly recommend just focusing on one conversion when you're creating this campaign. So you want to choose either sales or leads here. Now you can use some of the other objectives, but with sales and leads, you're going to get the best results. So in my case, I'm going to choose sales here. It's going to pull up some of the different conversion goals in my account. So what I want to do is remove two of these conversion goals. So we're going to remove this one and I'm just going to focus on purchases, which is my main conversion goal in my account. So we're going to click on continue. After that, you need to choose your campaign type. So down here, discovery, run ads on YouTube, Gmail, discover and more. So this is where we want to choose. Next, you want to choose the web page people will go to after clicking your ad. So I'm going to actually take my landing page. We're going to copy it and we're just going to paste this right here. And then you need to name your campaign. So let's do, okay, so my campaign name, April 2022, Farmhouse Furniture Sales. So we're going to click on Continue. Okay, so start with our campaign settings here. You can see we have our conversion goal all set. Next, we want to choose our location targeting. So you, can, you want to make sure you're just targeting the locations where your customers are located. In this case, I ship products to United States and Canada. So we're going to choose these two locations languages you want to choose the languages your customers speak so in this case i'm just going to choose english for my language targeting we want to keep scrolling down here next is going to be your bidding strategy so you want to be optimizing for conversions and you can set a target cost per action as well which i prefer to set a target cost per action so if you don't set a target cost per action you're using the maximize conversions bid strategy if you do set a target cost per action, you can actually say you want to drive conversions at a certain cost or less, basically. So in this case, they're giving me a suggested target CPA of $3. So I'm going to apply that to this campaign. And ultimately, over time, you want to bring your target CPA down so that you can drive more conversions within your budget. So we're going to keep scrolling down here. So for budget, let's just say I want to spend around $1,000 this month. So what I can do is enter a budget of $33. You want to take your budget and essentially multiply it by 30. So in this case, if I have my budget set at $33 a day, I'm going to spend somewhere between $990 and a little bit over $1,000. Now they're recommending a budget of at least $50 per day. If I'm driving theoretically 11 conversions, so at a $33 budget, target CPA of $3, Let's just say I'm driving conversions at $3 per conversion. Then I would drive 11 conversions per day. This budget is more than large enough. I always recommend setting a budget to where based on your cost per conversion, you're driving at least three, four conversions per day. The more, the better. But if you're not, if let's just say my target CPA was $30, my budget was $33. You want to make sure you have a much higher budget than your target CPA. 
So in this case, $3 here, $33 here, I think that's perfectly fine. I could always raise my budget if I'm seeing really good results. So let's keep coming down here to more settings. So we'll click here. You can set specific ad schedules. So choose when your ads run during the day. In this case, start and end dates. So since it's a, an April prom promotion, I wanna choose the start date as April 1st, and then I wanna select an end date of April 30th. So I wanna make sure my ads are only running during April so that people aren't seeing these advertisements in May. I could always come back and update my advertisements and change as my promotion changes. More settings down here. So content exclusions, discovery campaigns will automatically exclude moderate to highly sensitive content. So you don't really need to change anything here. So we're ready to move on to the next step. And now it's gonna come to targeting. So I would highly recommend using different types of targeting, starting with custom segments. So with custom segments, you can easily create your own custom segments. So just click here, click on the plus sign for a new custom segment. What I like to do is choose people who search for any of these terms on Google. So you wanna name your segment and then you wanna add Google search terms. You can actually just copy and paste a list of keywords if you already have them. Otherwise, what I can do is I know I wanna target people looking for furniture. So specifically, I wanna target people looking for farmhouse furniture. So I could choose something like farmhouse furniture. I can find some different synonyms like rustic furniture and country furniture and do something like shabby chic furniture. And then what you wanna do is just keep adding keywords to this list. So using my landing page, I could do accent furniture, bedroom furniture, which would include dressers and nightstands and headboards and bed frames, dining room furniture, which would include dining tables, all of these different keywords here, and you wanna keep entering them here. So your weekly impressions should continue to grow as you add more and more keywords. So I've already created this audience. All you need to do is enter a bunch of Google search terms here, name your audience, and click on save. You can also expand the segment by including specific websites or apps, but in this case, just enter, I would say, at least 20 search terms. Click on save. You can enter more and more search terms because you're basically trying to target people who have used those search terms on Google. So I already have this audience here, so I can click to add create custom segments, go to browse, and you can see I have farmhouse furniture, furniture search terms. So we're gonna click this one here. You can see my custom segment, it says, is between 10 million and 50 million weekly impressions. Right now it's showing 41 million weekly impressions. So that should be really more than enough just to run this campaign, and I can just target this custom segment for now. But let's go through some of the different targeting options here as well. I would highly recommend using your data, so use some of your remarketing audiences. You can just create a discovery campaign and say, okay, I just wanna target my, let's just say, anybody who has visited my website over the last 30 days. So right now that would be this audience right here is all users of Farmhouse Goals through my Google Analytics 4 account. And I would get rid of my furniture search terms custom segment here. And I could just target people who have visited my website and use my own data to create a remarketing campaign that just runs as a discovery campaign on YouTube, on Google Discover, and through Gmail. So since I wanna combine some of these different audience segments here, I'm gonna use my custom segment for farmhouse furniture. I'm gonna say anybody who's been to my website over the last 30 days, we wanna target them with this promotion as well. Let's use a similar segment too, so we can come over here to browse, and instead of website visitors, we can choose similar segments. So these are built based on our website visitor audiences here. So let's use similar to, and I have a furniture audience here. So you can see the size of this audience is 10K to 66K. So we'll choose this one here as well. Now, one issue you might run into when you choose a similar audience is weekly estimates might not be currently available because your similar audiences are always changing based on your actual data. So your website visitor audiences are gonna change as you get more and more people visiting. But right here, similar to my furniture audience, I wanna target that as well. Even though it says zero, I still, you could see it says 10K to 66K for size. I could also use some of my other similar segments there too. Now we'll keep coming down, interest and detailed demographics. So if I come in here and we go to browse, you can see some of these different options in market segments, life events, detailed demographics, and affinity segments. I prefer to target in market segments if anything, but in affinity segments are gonna be very broad. So what I like to do is if you come here to search, you can search things like furniture, whatever it is you're promoting, enter a search there and see if you can find some different in-market segments 
life events, and some different things that you can target. So in this case, home furnishings, those are people who are interested in purchasing home furniture. So it's the perfect audience for this type of campaign. So we're gonna choose this in-market audience, and this will give us plenty of weekly impressions by using a custom segment, by using our data, and by using an in-market audience. Again, you don't have to combine all of these. I like to combine some of these different segments, and then as we scroll down here, you're gonna see optimized targeting. I prefer using optimized targeting as well. So Google may find people beyond your selected audience, but it's only gonna help our conversion rates by using optimized targeting. And then you can also use demographics as well and choose specific people you wanna target. In this case, I'm gonna leave my demographics wide open and just focus on some of these different audience segments, and we're gonna use optimized targeting. So that will bring us to ad creation. So we want to create a discovery ad. And what you want to do first is start with your final URL. So where you're sending traffic to, in my case, I'm sending people directly to my furniture page. And I'm also going to duplicate this ad and send people to a separate landing page as well, because that way Google ads will serve my top performing advertisement based on whichever landing page is driving more conversions. So we're going to come back over to our campaign. So we have our final URL set here. Next, you want to choose our images. So you want to add up to 20 images. So if we just scroll over this question mark real quick, you can see some of the different images and image sizes they recommend. So landscape images, square images, and portrait images. And basically what you want are images that are at least 1200 by 1200 or larger. So what I'm gonna do here is click on the plus sign for images. You can choose from your asset library, so images you've already uploaded. You can upload new images here. You can use some of the stock images they have, and you can scan your website. In my case, I'm gonna choose my asset library because I've already uploaded a bunch of furniture images, and you can see all of them, so 1500 by 1125, 1500 by 1500. So you wanna use very large visual images. And then what we can do is, let's say I click on this here, and we go to selected. You can choose between these three different ratios. So this one works perfect for this. It works well as a square. And it works well as this too, so we can select three ratios, and that will count as three of our 20 images. So we wanna keep doing this for some of these different images here. So we'll select this one. So again, this one works well for all three too. So we have our landscape, our square, and we have our four by five image here. So we have three more images added. So now we have six out of 20. So I'm gonna kind of fast forward through this, but you wanna keep selecting images. And you can take some of these images. For example, I could take this one and just use the square and select one ratio. So you just wanna choose the best possible images that you think will help people actually go to your website and complete your conversion goal. So I'm gonna fast forward to this part a bit and pick all 20 of my assets. Okay, so you can see I have a total of 20 selected assets. I would just highly recommend making sure you have enough images here so that Google Ads can serve different advertisements to people and they're not seeing the same images over and over. You never know what people are looking for, so somebody might be looking for patio furniture, somebody might be looking for accent furniture, somebody might be looking for living room furniture. So you wanna use different images to try to reach people based on what they're gonna look at. So we have some of these different ad previews here, so you can see the YouTube watch feed, and it will continue to go through and show some of these different advertisements, so you can see the way that your ads are gonna look. But once we have our 20 images here, next you wanna add logos. So with logos, what I like to do is choose one square logo here. So you can see we have our one logo already selected. So we're gonna click on save. You can add up to five logos. So if you wanna use some different logos that you have, you can do that as well. Now we come down to headlines. So we wanna add our headlines and we can add up to five different headlines. So you just wanna click on this plus sign. So the headlines are all gonna be 40 characters. We come down here, we have five description lines. Those are all gonna be 90 characters. And then we also get business name here and call to action text. So I'll do those two real quick because business name is just gonna be farmhouse goals. And for call to action text, I'm just gonna use shop now. Ooh, okay, so now I'm gonna enter my description lines and I'm gonna enter my headlines. I'm gonna fast forward through this part a little bit and not type out each individual one through this video. Okay, so I have my five headlines here. So just kind of focusing on the sale that I have. So I could also do April sale and different things like that. I could use different headlines, but you really just wanna focus on the sale and then go over some different selling points. Upgrade your furniture today, 
farmhouse furniture for your entire home, shop the best rustic furniture sets. So we're gonna come down here to descriptions and we're gonna enter all five of our descriptions. Okay, so we have our five description lines here too. And one thing you just wanna look at the top. So our ad strength here is excellent. We've used all of our images, all of our headlines and all of our descriptions. So this should help us kind of get the best results with our advertisements and with our targeting. So we have our entire advertisement ready. So we just can click on create ad here. Now you can see we have our advertisement, so we can create a brand new advertisement if we want, which you can do, it'll only help your performance. Or what we could do is come right here, duplicate this advertisement, and then just change our final URL. So instead of sending people to my product category furniture page, I could just say, let's just send them directly to farmhouse furniture, and I'll set up a landing page at that exact page as well, where I go over the exact promotion, what code people can use at checkout, now keep in mind, this entire promotion is not something I'm actually running on my website. I'm just showing you this to give you a good example for how to run discovery campaigns. So we have our second advertisement here. We update our final URL. And all we need to do is click on apply changes. And we have two advertisements here. And we can click on next. Okay, so they give us the following issue may negatively impact our campaign's performance. They want us to increase our budget to $50 per day. Again, I think our budget is perfectly set based on trying to spend $1,000 for the entire month of April and with our target CPA bid of $3. So we have our campaign name, type, objective. We have all of our campaign settings here, our ad group who we're targeting and our advertisement. So all we need to do now is click on publish campaign and our discovery campaign is gonna start to run. Now there's different options you can choose as far as targeting, different audience segments in different ad groups using different advertisements. So you can always come here, duplicate your ad group. So we have ad group one right here, say, okay, let's copy this ad group. And then all you need to do is click on paste and it's gonna duplicate that exact ad group. And then you can just go into your audiences and adjust your audience segments. So you can choose to basically say, I wanna have an ad group that one targets re my remarketing audiences, one targets similar audience, one targets my custom segments, and one targets in-market audiences, and choose to run them as different ad groups rather than combining them like I did. It's really a matter of preference, and then you can choose to pause certain ad groups on certain days if you wanna make sure that maybe the in-market audience is seeing your advertisements one day, and then another day, maybe similar audiences are seeing your advertisements. So you can kind of adjust who is seeing your ads, but I do think discovery campaigns could be very useful if you are running a promotion like this and you just wanna make sure you're getting your point across to people as they browse YouTube or Google Discover or use their Gmail. So these are discovery campaigns. If you have any questions about them, please leave them in the comments section. You can run your discovery campaigns along with search, along with Performance Max, and you really shouldn't have any issues with too much crossover there. Performance Max ads do run at, in the same places that Discovery ads do, along with other places as well. So you could just run Performance Max campaigns rather than Discovery campaigns. But for right now, it just gives you more access to some of the inventory through Google ads. So if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.